Alright, welcome to my post-commentary of my fourth glitchless PB. I don't actually know what the final time is yet. The splits at the end said 3754.13, but I start the timer early, as I just did there, and I also end it late. So it's a bit of a fun surprise to see how much time gets sh uh, shaved off the final time. It's probably going to be a 3753, so as of now, you guys technically know more about this run than I do. In a way. That was a really nice tinderbox grab there. There's a lot less fun things you can do in this map. Uh, you can't just fling the helmets everywhere like in any percent. And you also can't grab the broom through the seam and then clip it out like I would usually try to go for. So I try to glitch a little less um, in this category. And Andy's completely right. This category is called glitch less, not glitch free. And I like to keep it that way. Glitch free is not a category I want to run. Come on, this is amnesia. It's not glitch free. So, it's actually been a year and two months since my 3830 PB. Uh, recently, Fly for Shy and Nosferatu have both been doing some glitchless. Fly for Shy is new to the game, and Nosferatu is new to the glitchless category, coming from any percent. So I've started practicing the game again a week ago, um, as some new optimizations were found by NOS on stream. And also Citrus and I have been having some fun playing the game a bit again, and de-rusting. Citrus has been doing attempts uh, here and there, on and off. And ever since a year ago, um, he, he's known how much time could be saved off of my run. But I've only recently realized how much time there was to save off of 3830. Um, so, um, I've started doing actual attempts a couple days ago, and, um, I just got this really nice PB. And, wow, I thought my Rainy Hall was better than that. Uh, I am resetting to Rainy Halls now. In about a third of the runs, I do reset from Rainy Hall, but apparently one, a 157 slipped by, so I guess I'm not that, uh, rigorous with it. So the inputs I use are space and mouse wheel down for jumps and left mouse and mouse wheel up for interact. So I can't climb ladders very fast with this, but it's pretty close. But it makes clicking things so much easier. The trick with the lever there is you pull up and then down. Thanks for telling me that, Citrus. So I had a bit of trouble with this new strat here. Um, so this was a new strat I found. Um, so ideally after standing in front of the banister, you do a single jump over it. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case here. I got stuck, but I still survived somehow, and I'll take it. So admittedly, I don't know how much this trick saves. I want to say, done perfectly, it saves like 5 to 10 seconds. Um, but it's really hard to time, because the flashback timing gets all messed up, and you have to time like 4 maps in a row. Uh, so these books here were really good. You have to eye the first book, just see it in your head grab it with your muscle memory and the second book you want to run right past that because you have two tries to get that book you only want to stop on the second try the first try it's fine if you miss it and also right here um the air control is the exact same as if you're just running so you want to jump a little bit here uh not all slowdown triggers work like that but this one in particular does And so, this map is going to be a lot slower. So the first entrance hall and the archives are fast. This is this map and the wine cellar are going to be slower. So right here we have to hit a ton of triggers. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking, come bring the lamp. So there's actually two fake golds. Um, in this map and also in Wine Cellar, those are fake goals, and there's nothing I can do about that if I still want to compare against my 3830 PB, since those two maps will always be faster in that run. There's also a new Wine Cellar strat here found by Citrus. Um, it's a really cool strat, and I would never have found something like this. Um, you'll see it in a little bit. So, um... It's very easy to mess this up. Um, most of the time I still get the trick, but 
it can suck to lose a run to this. So what you do is you just go in this room, jump, and throw back into the right. That's all you do. Uh, there's that first beam that you just grab and do that. One interesting thing to note here is that when you do this new strat, there's about a 1 in 30 chance of the rocks falling and actually exploding in such a way that your game almost freezes and your frame time jumps up to around 30 seconds. If you wait about 15 minutes, your FPS goes up again and you'll notice that all the objects in the map are gone, including the stairs in the center. Fun fact, you can also make the stairs disappear by flinging a barrel fast into it, but it's really hard to do. This explosion was also experienced by Nosferatu on stream, except he caused it using a different method, which was a barrel flung super fast into other barrels, causing a chain reaction of explosive force. So yeah, a really good wine cellar. And right here, you want to take a step on the stair and then jump to not get stuck on it. So you, you run up the first step and then do a jump. Run up the first step and then do a jump. And so right here, uh, minus almost 12 seconds coming out of Wine Cellar. So that was the time saves from the Entrance Hall strat and also the Wine Cellar strat added together. Just very cool tricks in the beginning of the run. Now things start slowing down. Um, we've already won over those new strats, and then it'll be smooth sailing from here for a while. This right here, you kind of want to look up and then down, just so it doesn't get stuck. Apparently my lab was really bad in my 38-30 run. Here's a new shortcut that I don't think was done, but um, it was something that I saw Nosferatu doing. And that's another half a second or so saved. So here, uh, there's a full lantern refill in uh, in study that I'm using, so I can just use the lantern all I want in the maps leading up to it. So this right here, uh, you want to keep this close to you so you don't accidentally fling it. You want to do a jump here and just whack it against that. Now, first try. What was that, second try? Third try? <laughs> that was really bad. I lost four seconds uh, off of my gold in this map because of that. So I failed it like three or four times. I didn't just fail that once. So that was pretty embarrassing. Oh, this lever. But now it really is just smooth sailing until, I would say, the storage. Uh, there's a little bit of RNG in the storage, and then after that, smooth sailing until Prison South. And then after Prison South, Prison North, more RNG, Cistern Hub, there's a ton of hard maps there. So the difficulty in this, uh, in this run is really just concentrated into these places. Especially around the Cistern Hub. Right here, this barrel just boosted me backward. Uh, I was trying to jump on top of the barrel to do this sick jump door, door grab. And right there, my lantern ran out. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how much lantern you have. That's pretty smooth. Yeah, that was good. 
the best even. Right here, just a quick scroll and the glass just instantly breaks. So here's the full refill that you can get. So I believe it's uh, a full refill. Let's you have seven minutes and 15 seconds, I think it was, of oil. And that'll last you a good chunk of the run. But of course there's more oil bar uh, barrels coming up. So really, uh, oil management is not that hard in this run. Not that it's necessary at all, really. Aside from the last map. So here's uh, Nosferatu's new um, new key strat. It's a really cool strat. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get it showed off perfectly, though. I had to do it again because I didn't miss the grab the first time. And I also failed the grab right here. Um, I didn't lose that much time, though. The time saves are on this map. So that was a really nice boost. Got over the banister very cleanly. So overall, that was um, going from back all two to back all three. That, that was a four second time save. Pretty solid. And a part of that, of course, is from the guest room uh, key, key flashback skip. Some drill parts, and then we're getting ready to do the barrel armor here. So this was something that um, I'm using a, uh, a setup by Citrus. Basically, I'll just quickly explain it. There is a blood texture on the uh, on the ground right here. You stand right over it, wait until the grunt starts moving for like a quarter second, and then just start start running straight until. Uh, straight for this barrel. Kind of eye the grunt a little bit so you know where he is and get into place. And this was a really nice two hit. That's really good. I think you can even get a one hit, but I think a one hit's possible. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. But I thought the one hit was the best you can get right there. Also, something interesting, if you have your lantern out right here, when the fire comes on, it actually makes you put your lantern away. So, that was something I just noticed today. Now we're just running in a straight line to the exit again. So already, this was a really good pace. Um, really, the only time loss was the entrance hall strat. Could have won a little better. And also the four seconds lost in refinery. That was pretty stupid. But overall, this is a really good time up to this point. Very close to golds. So I'm already minus 27 seconds right now. That's just how much time I had to save in, in the storage. Got a really nice rug boost right there. Right, I got that. It's always nice when uh, I realize something cool happened in this run that I don't remember doing when watching the recording over again. All right, so the machine room. Uh, this this map is terrible. Um, the two biggest time losses were four seconds in refinery, and uh, it's kind of a. I'll, I'll say how much time I lost here after. So yeah, the the, the levers aren't that important. Um, they were alright. And it's not that important because you were slowed down. So the menuing here was alright. And then, yep, did the cog fling. 
Ah, <sighs> so that was a really stupid time loss. Um, yeah, the machine room was really sloppy. I think I was pretty nervous uh, having a good run up to this point, and I was probably too tense, uh, which is bad. So if you're jerking your camera around with control, that's good. But if you're really tense, then um, it could also be really bad as well. Because when you're tense, you'll be jerking your uh, camera too much when you shouldn't. And sometimes you're also not moving it enough because of how tense your, your arm is. So um, an idea I had was I think I should actually practice the machine room just do a few runs through the machine room as a warm-up before doing any more runs in the future whether it's any percent or glitchless i think that's a really good idea that i want to try to do so yeah i lost seven seconds in the machine room that was the, the other large time loss in this run so yeah seven seconds and then four four seconds so that's 13 seconds right there in two big blocks So yeah, Machine Room is a really good warm-up map because you have the menuing, you have uh, precise clicking, you have the cog, uh, you have the cog throws, and that's really precise um, camera movement and clicking. Just a really good warm-up map. Risen South. So I recorded this run uh, using the Magic YUV codec, uh, 1440p, 420 chroma sub sampling. Uh, so the raw video is 160 gigabytes, but the Magic YUV codec is also a bit compressible, so I'm hoping I can get it down to 100 gigabytes for archival. Uh, I like to keep the raw video for just my most recent PB. Uh, but if I do get a PB that beats this run, I will delete it because having 100 gigabytes saved there, that, that's a lot of space to waste. On a run that I'm just, on a video I'm not, never going to use again. But if it's my PB, then why not keep it? Alright, so the Grunt Strat. Thankfully he wasn't slippery. I was having quite a bit of trouble with that. Uh, he kept coming into the room, but I guess I wasn't in the corner enough. And oh, right, this was terrible. Okay, I forgot about this time loss. Oh, that was like what? Um, that was probably about two or three seconds. So three seconds. So this map also has a pretty big RNG portion at the end. Right here there's a slowdown trigger that you want to jump for. So you want to jump right here uh, in between those two pillars. I don't think he it's I don't think it's necessary to jump after that though. I don't think you have normal air control at all. Also, for these grunts, I don't know if having your lantern out helps. Um, so if I do ever have my lantern out for these things, it might just be habit. And um, I might just not want to risk not having it out if it changes anything at all. So I just take sharp corners there. And right here, I kind of go past it a little bit. I, the grunt, just, to know where, just so I know where it is. And then get down here. And he slapped me. I don't know if that counted towards the door at all. Might not have. And then, um, as I recently learned, you can throw the door out of the way with the chair. So the hitboxes here are a little weird. Uh, for the first thing, you want to put it to the right side, and the second grab, you want to look more to the left. Here, just grab it once you see the lever start moving. 
And this is the first real ladder climb. Um, it's probably like a little bit, like a fraction of a second slower than optimal if you use the any percent keybinds. Now in this map, uh, fun fact, there's a strat you can do where right, I'll try to point it out, right here, you drop down and you get a boost and you go under the bridge and you head straight for the dial, or for the, um, the valve, and you can do a jump and then grab it from underneath, and you can probably save like a second if you do it very well, uh, but I would only use that as a backup, I wouldn't actually explicitly go out of the way to do that. Here, I think you can grab a couple of jumps off of this, which is a little faster. Now the steam jumps. I think this, yeah, I don't think the second one was out when I was going past it. I don't know if it'll be helpful to pay attention to which ones that you don't have to jump for. Oh, right there, you can do a boost off of the thing. So that probably saves like a second. Yeah, maybe you can pay attention to when the steam's like coming out and uh, going away, so you can probably skip one of the steam jumps if you wanted to. Alright, so here's the control room skip, where you ninja across the ledge at the top. Now, I'm, I'm doing Nosferatu setup, which is lying up against um, that little black dot. And then wait until the door disappears is what Nos does, but I wait like a fraction of a second longer, because I find that it makes it a ton more consistent. It's completely worth the extra time you're spending. And here I'm just make I'm just showing you like how dangerous this actually looks, um, just by looking straight down and leaning. It gives you a really nice view. So yeah, it's really scary. Probably could have dropped off of that a little sooner as well. Use my laudanum real quick. Which should save time. Do you see, Daniel? It has yielded. What? The shadow. Technically, it's faster to not jump here because you're constantly improving your um, your move speed. So if you just stay on the ground, you're instantly going to get the new move speed, which is going to increase like I don't know every frame or whatever by a tiny bit. So technically, you can probably save like a small fraction of a second if you just don't jump throughout this entire area. But of course, watch out to not get stuck on the things on the ground, like the bones and stuff. And I failed the menuing here, I did not practice this. I think I did it too fast, actually. I think that might have been how I failed. That brute thing, I don't know what causes it to come out like that. Um, sometimes you can skip that, I think. And here I wasn't really sure what... Um, I didn't practice that either. So I kind of messed up that fall. This one's pretty easy. You want to do a left click? to get on the ladder and do a right click right after that to get off the ladder. That's the fastest way you can grab and uh, prevent fall damage. And fun fact, um, every single time you do a jump, you're saving three frames in, in water. Okay, here's a pipe grab, which I thought I missed, but I didn't. Yeah, every time you jump in the water uh, for like a split second, 
your move speed multiplier in the in the air is normal speed and because of that you get normal air control and the air control is what causes you to accelerate and save three frames per jump so that's how it works here I probably shouldn't have went for this that's like I know it did refill my lantern I just spammed the thing which is why it said no need to refill but that that one's probably not worth going for here's a scary brute that you have to dodge So I, I think my success rate in sewers, uh, g going past both of those brutes, it should be over 50%. Like it feels like I get it like 60% of the time. Maybe even more consistent than that. Here just kind of wait a little bit and then go past it. Make sure your timer jump off of that corner right there. And here's a second suboptimal ladder climb. I might have to time this against like an any percent version just to see how much time I'm actually losing. But it's pr I'm probably not losing that much time. You know, maybe a second at most doing that. Really good. I, I grabbed the ladder at the top and went into the load, so I didn't fall at all. So yeah, minus 29. I'm 29 seconds ahead. Right here, I did a really risky version of that. Uh, you don't actually have to... Usually, I stop sprinting um, off the edge, but that time, I just fell off the edge early from the left side. So you probably don't go for that. Also, I took damage. That was like a 10 damage fall at the end, which was kind of dumb. Right here, you can kind of walk over this, walk onto that, do a jump. I kind of messed up with this. But it's all fine because you're in a flashback. So you're if you're actually talking about how much distance you're losing, it's not that much, like the slower you're going, the less distance you lose for like a mess up of X amount of seconds. So once you go back to normal speed, the time you lose is like, a fraction of the time that you were standing still for. And for this oil refill, uh, I knew I was full on oil, so I just skipped it. Didn't save that much time though, since they're all really quick. So we're gonna fall down a second time, and then after that, um, there's so many ways you can get down, um, down the stairs. That's going to be in a little bit here. Oh, almost fell off there. And I was a little smarter over here by not doing another jump. Okay, so right here. Uh, it's really easy to get on the rail if you strafe. So you strafe, do one single jump, and you get up. On the way down, um, I took 10 damage fall, which is totally fine. It You, you absolutely want to avoid taking a 40 damage fall. Um... Now, as for whether jumping against the geometry there on the way down, if it's a glitch or not, and should be allowed or not, uh, my verdict my, my verdict is this. You either allow brushing up on the vertical geometry, or you don't. So, I, if you're a purist, then just go left and jump on the box instead. And just lose, like, I don't know, one or two seconds. Um, in both cases... Of falling like along the geometry you are using the geometry to slow you down so just jumping by itself is not gonna make it a glitch I don't think because in order to jump you have to already be on the geometry so you can't allow brushing it but not also allow jumping against it okay so that that's my opinion on that now here's a really easy um, gap boost if you set it up properly, it's free. Like you, It's just like a 100% success rate, pretty much. Um, the inputs are very easy to do. The hardest part just becomes setting it up. So you would practice setting it up as fast as you can possibly set it. Oh, right here, my camera. I'm not sure what happened with my camera there. Um, maybe that's like... Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. My mouse was just way off, though. 
Yeah, for the choir gap boost, you just want to practice setting up as fast as you can because that's where you're going to get your time save from. Miss this boost as well. There's also a boost you can do right here, which I missed. So these choir boosts are all right. I got some of them. Pretty happy with that. So I think I got really good boosts over here. Um, now all you're trying to do is you're just trying to kill yourself as fast as you can possibly do that. By jumping into a pit. So you can kind of do a boost there and you kind of slowly climb up here. Do that boost. Fail that. Jump up here. Do that boost. And just die. That was pretty good. Saved five seconds off of my 38-30 run. Now coming up here, um, the first nave is of course really slow because you have to go up to the control room, like compared to any percent. But this map here is faster than any percent because you just go straight to the other door. You don't have to mess with the out of bounds and like going around stuff at all. So it's kind of enjoyable just effortlessly going through these maps. Same goes for that for the nave after this. Transept, pretty boring map really. Um, there's just nothing exciting you could do here. Um, there's this or piece grab that you could do through this thing, which I that was all right. You can do these boosts uh, on these pillars as you're leaving the doors. So at this point, um, pretty much after choir, after the choir gap boost, your run's pretty much guaranteed. Like there's nothing else that could really kill your run. Um, at least that's how that's how it should be. So the run kind of just ends at like 30 minutes. Again, all the difficult parts are just clumped together. Um, chapter one, of course, the first few maps are just hell because of the new uh, the new entrance hall strat I found. Um, and then, so that's a huge difficulty. And then kind of smooth sailing for a little, or no, wine cell is pretty difficult as well. And then smooth sailing until storage. And then prison south, prison north, cistern hub, sewers, nave one's kind of difficult, and then choir, and then your run's just done. There really aren't any hard tricks left. Yeah, here's the other nave that's faster than any percent. You just take this straight line, pretty much, right to the exit. So here's chapter, here's the last chapter, chapter three. I think if you have a laudanum here, if you have a spare laudanum, you can probably save around two seconds. I know I calculated it before, I don't remember what it was. Um, 
But yeah, if you have an extra laudanum, because of all the running you have to do. Oh, I guess I did have an extra laudanum. I just <laughs> didn't use it. Okay, w whatever. Um, yeah, you can probably save about two seconds if you use the laudanum here from all the running you have to do. Right there was a really nice jump door grab. Really efficient way to get past that door. So right here, it's a little faster if you um, walk along the edges. Like you do have to kind of slow down because you have to strafe around everything, but you avoid the water slow down. So I think I've timed, yeah, that was really good because I made it, um, I made it past every single one of those corners. But I timed that and like doing it perfectly, you only save like a second. So um, you're really not really doing it for the time save. Do it because it's cool. So this is the easiest map to get down the stairs in Nave. It's just the same route you do in 80%. Oop, got stuck a little bit. Apparently, um, that nave 4 was really good in my PV because I lost time there. So here you just want to suicide as fast as you can. Um, you can just jump on that little lip on the ground and then jump over the rail. And then here you just want to hold back. And then until you can see, uh, yeah, after you can see you can turn your camera around. But before that you, you just want to run straight backwards. Oh, I guess that that's where I use my laudanum. It's probably faster to throw it into the left trigger, but um, I, I use the trigger you throw the rocks into between the two cogs because it's easier to see. And we're just running to the end. I think I was tempted to go for the boost on the left side there, but this is glitchless, so I guess I was kind of unsure of whether I should use it or not. I probably could have. It's the goo that just like slaps you forward. If you just brush against that goo and do a jump, it just boosts you forward. So I probably should have done it. And there I think I, um, did I open my inventory? I think I opened my inventory to check my oil, so that was kind of a waste of time there. <laughs> I don't know what checking my oil would do. If I don't have oil, then I don't have oil. I can't get oil by checking my inventory, so that was a time waste. At least I remember doing it. I, I didn't actually see it in the video just now. Here you just want to stab yourself and then stand here. Wait for the stretch. Don't wait for the screen shake. It's the stretch that... That's what triggers it. You could probably like start doing circles um, and then just jump out of the trigger at the perfect time if you want to save milliseconds. If you're like super optimal. And here the mouse was just super smooth. It's like this, uh, the smooth mouse effect except on steroids. Like your mouse just gets really, really smooth. And it's also smooth for the beginning of this map too, so that first grab is a little difficult. Yeah, um, no you fool, we're done. So yeah, again, the time should be like a 37.53 point something. Um, I'm pretty happy with this run. Um. So my, my sum of best without the fake golds, um, 
I've calculated it, and it's it's going to be around 3716 would be my sum of S without the fake golds. So that's pretty close. Um, got pretty close to that. I suppose I suppose like a sub 37 could be possible if I did like a segmented run. Okay, it's it's obviously possible actually. Um, I, I'm sure it's possible. Epilogue. I just found you could like throw it past this and have it fall down the other side. So that was really cool. That there's like a tunnel above there that you could throw it through. Here I was just trying to get the chairs stuck on the chandelier and then get the large oil potion. So yeah, um, a really nice run. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm pretty happy with how fast I got it too. Um, and it, it has all all the new strats that Citrus and I found and also um, uh, optimizations that Nosferatu used. So this is going to be my new PB. Maybe I'll come back in another year and improve it more if anything new is found. But that's it. Thanks for watching.